Hello everyone, welcome. Today we'll be reviewing four common must-know trends on the periodic table. Atomic radii, ionic radii, ionization energy, and electronegativity. Periodic trends refer to various patterns seen on the periodic table that help us visualize correlations of the elements. Before we jump into atomic radii, we must first understand a few basic concepts. For one, there are two factors that affect the atomic radii or size. One is the distance of the valence electron or electrons in the outermost shell and the proton within the nucleus. The second is the amount of protons in the nucleus. Both of these influence the force of attraction between the protons and electrons. Force of attraction is very strong between protons and electrons. However, the attraction between same charges is weak. So weak that in fact they repel each other. So positives with positives, they will repel each other. Negative with a negative will also repel each other. You can think of the proton in the center of the nucleus like a magnet. And it wants to grab the electron and bring it close to the nucleus. It would make sense to say that the closer an object is to the magnet, the better hold the magnet will have on it. So with that being said, the further away an electron is from the proton, the less attraction there is. And the less attraction there is, the less hold the proton will have on the electron. In contrast, the closer the electron is to the proton, the more attraction there is. And the more attraction there is, the more hold the proton will have on the electron. Next, the amount of protons in the nucleus will also greatly impact the force of attraction between the proton and the electron. The more protons there are, that magnetic attraction will be amplified. The more power the protons will have over the electrons, and they will be able to pull them in towards the nucleus. Okay, so we know now that two major factors influence the hold between protons and electrons. So now let's take a close look at atomic radii. Atomic radii is the size of an atom. Specifically, it is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost electron. The trend of atomic radii on this periodic table looks like this. From right to left, it increases. In other words, the atoms get bigger going right to left. And going downwards on the periodic table, the atomic radii also increases. The reason why it increases going downwards is, as you go down, the number of shells increases on the atom. We know that atoms on period one have one shell, period two have two shells, period three have three shells, and so on until we get down to period seven with seven shells. So for example, on period one, we have hydrogen with one shell, period two, with, we have lithium with two shells, period three, we have sodium with three shells, period four, we have potassium with four shells, period five, we have rubidium with five shells, Period six, we have cesium with six shells. And I could not fit it here, but on period seven, we would have francium with seven shells. So we can see that the atoms grow larger as they go down the periodic table. Now let's compare the atoms right to left and see why they get bigger towards the left side. Take hydrogen and helium, for example. Hydrogen has one proton in it, in the center in the nucleus, and one electron around it. Helium has two protons in the center and two electrons around it. Remember we learned that the more protons an atom has, the stronger it will have a hold on the electrons. So the more protons created even more magnetic power that pulls these electrons towards the nucleus. This created a more compact and smaller atom versus a hydrogen atom that only has one proton, it will have less of a pull on the electron. Let's compare lithium and neon. Lithium has three protons and three electrons. Neon has 10 protons and 10 electrons. Simply because neon has more protons, it will have a greater pull on the electrons and bring them closer to the center, making this little neon more compact and smaller than lithium. Let's try a practice question. Which of the following has a larger atomic radii, potassium or sodium? 
Because potassium is lower than sodium, it has a larger atomic radii. How about oxygen and fluorine? Oxygen has a larger atomic radii. Associated with atomic radii is ionic radii. Ionic referring to ions like cations with a positive charge and anions with a negative charge. Here we have lithium in its neutral form and its ionic form with a plus one charge. Lithium has three protons in both forms. In its neutral form, it has three electrons and because it has a one plus, it must have only two electrons in its ionic form. You will automatically notice that the cation is smaller than its neutral form. That is because cations will always have more protons than electrons. This creates a much stronger energy pool coming from the protons. And they are able to pull the electrons closer to the nucleus. In contrast, we have an anion, nitrogen in its neutral form and in its ionic form as an anion with a negative three charge. Both have the same number of protons, that being seven. The neutral nitrogen has seven electrons while the ionic form has 10 electrons. There always will be more electrons than protons in anions. So the protons don't have the upper hand here. They do not have enough energy to pull these electrons inwards significantly. As a result, the anion stays larger in size simply because it has more electrons taking up space. The takeaway here is that if you are presented with a question involving ionic radii, remember, Cations are smaller than their neutral atom, and anions are larger than their neutral atoms. By the way, if you're not sure what ions are, like cations and anions, I'll leave a link below of my lecture involving those things. Moving on to our next trend, ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove one or more electrons from the valence shell of a gaseous atom. Here we have two atoms. One atom has its electron relatively far from the nucleus, and the other has its electron relatively close to the nucleus. We know that there will be a weak hold on the one that has a greater distance between the electron and the proton, and a strong hold on the one that has the electron closer to the proton. If another atom comes around and wants to create a bond with this atom to the left, Will it have a hard time taking away its electron? No, it will not be hard at all. It will be so easy for another atom to come and steal away this electron because the proton in the center has a very weak hold on it. So if it is easy to take the electron, then less energy is needed to steal it away. Think of it like if you're trying to take a ball out of someone's hands and the person is weak. It won't take that much energy for you to steal the ball away from their grip. On the other hand is the proton that has a stronghold on the electron. When another atom comes along to steal the electron, it will be so hard for them. They will need more energy to steal the electron away. So if you're now trying to steal the ball away from someone who is a lot stronger than you, you will have to use way more energy, way more strength to try and steal it away from their grip. The takeaway here is the more energy needed to steal a valence electron, the more ionization energy increases. And the less energy needed to steal a valence electron, the ionization energy decreases. The trend on a periodic table goes like this. As you go up the periodic table, the ionization energy, or IE for short, increases. And as you go left to right, the IE also increases. So generally, it increases going in this direction. Let's look at an example. Which of the following has more ionization energy, hydrogen or helium? By relying on the periodic table, we can see helium is further to the upper right. Therefore, it has more ionization energy. 
that just means that it takes more energy from another atom to come around and steal its valence electrons. And it takes very little energy for another atom to come around and steal hydrogen's valence electrons. How about arsenic and selenium? Selenium has more ionization energy here. How about rubidium and potassium? Potassium is our answer here. Now, unfortunately, there are a few exceptions. I'm only including these because I know a variety of students will be using this video to study. So if you are in high school or college chemistry, you do need to know these exceptions. However, if you are here strictly for the T's exam, in my opinion, you don't need to know these, so just hang in there for a minute. These exceptions involved beryllium, magnesium, and calcium, also boron, aluminum, and gallium. Normally, we would say the elements on the right side have more IE, but we are going to flip them. So the correct way is Beryllium has more IE than boron, magnesium has more IE than aluminum, and calcium has more IE than gallium. And just a few more exceptions. You're also going to flip these that I've circled. So nitrogen has more IE than oxygen, phosphorus has more IE than sulfur, and arsenic has more IE than selenium. By the way, if you're wondering why this is, I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but if you know how to do electron configuration, go ahead and do the electron configuration for one of these examples and you'll see why you need to flip them. Okay, so moving on to our very last trend on the periodic table, electronegativity. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract electrons to form a chemical bond. Before we move forward, I think it's helpful to see a side-by-side -side definition of electronegativity and ionization energy because these two can easily be confused. Notice that the key word in electronegativity is attract electrons. And in ionization energy, the key word is to remove electrons. So this is what the electronegativity trend looks like on the periodic table. Fluorine is our most electronegative atom. So electronegativity increases going towards fluorine. It also increases going up and going from left to right on the periodic table. Let me explain why this trend happens. On the left side of the periodic table, we have our metals, and to the right, we generally have our non-metals. One of the characteristics of metals is that they like to give away electrons. Because they like to give away electrons, they lean towards being less electronegativity. You can also say that they are more electropositive. If we look at the definition again, electronegativity is an atom attracting electrons. So metals do the opposite. Non-metals, on the other hand, like to attract electrons. So they definitely lean towards being more electronegative per the definition of electronegativity. One thing important to add here is that noble gases do not participate in electronegativity because they have a full valence shell and are completely content. They have no desire to give or take electrons. Let's look at some practice questions. Write the correct order for the following from increasing electronegativity. Increasing order means from least to greatest. So we have silicone, magnesium, chlorine, and aluminum. Our answer here is magnesium, aluminum, silicon, and chlorine. Magnesium being the least electronegative and chlorine being the most electronegative. How about silicon or oxygen? Oxygen is closer to fluorine, so it is more electronegative. How about silicon or carbon? Carbon is going to be more electronegative because it is above silicon. How about nitrogen and sulfur? Both look almost equidistant to fluorine. 
but nitrogen is going to be more electronegative here. The general rule is going up one unit is more electronegative than going to the right one unit. So going one unit up from phosphorus to nitrogen, there is more electronegativity than going from phosphorus one unit to the right to sulfur. And with that, we have learned four trends on the periodic table. Thank you so much for sticking around, guys. I hope you learned something new. And until next time.